everyone. Welcome to the uh, uh, the yeah. main main thing of uh, uh, planning south. Um, as Jason from Holiday on chairman of today, uh, we're, we're not expecting a fire drill today. So if the alarm sounds, please leave some building to the emergency exits there and there. We'll be we'll be I've got one. So if you get close to the microphone, who? Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How about that? Can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you now. Hello. We'll start again. Hello everyone, welcome to the main meeting of uh, uh, Planning South. Uh, my name is Peter Seep, and as Joseph Bay chairs uh, away on um, uh, on holiday, and I'm the chair today, I'm the vice chair. Um, we're not expecting a fire drill today, so if you hear the alarm, please leave via the two exits and we'll meet you in the car park. This meeting will be recorded and uploaded to uh, YouTube following the meeting, so if there are any members of the public uh, present who don't wish to be recorded, please be aware you may be recorded by these automatic cameras um, if you speak or there's noise in, in your direction. And if you wish to not be recorded, please let us know. It will be half of the facts. Please can you switch your phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? As we go through, I'll announce the item uh, on the agenda and then it's one of the applications. The planning office will introduce the application with the relevant updates and provide visual and presentation to any members uh, and study with the context of the application. I'll then call on public speakers to present in accordance with the public speaking rules. I'll then ask members and officers if there are any points of clarification uh, on points raised by uh, a, uh, public speakers. I'll then ask members if there are any technical questions mm -hmm. of officers. Can you? Sorry, can you not hear? Not well. Uh, this point. I think it's the uh, induction loop. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Why don't you carry that um, speaker down nearer to the, um, the public and they will come across to the room talk? Yeah, you might, might help. You thought you could get something coming from here. So, might help you. That's going to a speaker's fine, Tony. It won't actually come up through. It's not touching the number. Let's find it. It's still free. Can you just speak into it again, please? And I'll see whether it. Excuse me. All of these candles in on four. Council people, but what? Why? What they're here? I think. Yeah, but it's meeting. Sorry. Yeah. Very little. Yeah. 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 I think it is, yeah, it's as well as we can have it, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit better. Is it a bit better? I mean, we can try different microphones. We've gone to the chair and tried different microphones, but we have got issues with the mics, but I think that's the only this one. This one's clearly working because yeah, the, sound, the sound's good. coming through the audience. I think you might just have to, if you can, Peter, just try to uh, well, shout a bit more. I'm quite happy to make myself clear. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. If I was telling you to shout, apologies yeah. <laughs> for that. Okay, part way through the procedure, I'd explain that um, after the presentations uh, 
with uh, members who ask technical questions of the officers, and then the committee will debate the application. Yeah. Members will then seek for, uh, can seek for the clarification for, uh, uh, from officers or on points made by speakers through me. And the officers will respond, and then the committee will make a decision by vote. So the uh, first item on the agenda today is apologies. Um, we have a fairly extensive list of apologies. Um, it's a good, let's go through. Yeah, we have apologies from Councillor Jason Baker, Oliver Patrick, Jenny Kenton, and Kevin Messenger. Emily Pirastone, who was substitute for Jason Baker, unfortunately, has now have said her apologies as well. She's unwound. The second item on the agenda. Uh, Sorry, Councillor Kendall says he's emailed in, but it's not had any response back um, to say that he's got convicting um, some set meeting. Thank you. I'll make that. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, second item on the agenda. Uh, oh, before we go any further, um, as I was wondering, uh, can, can we have uh, any volunteers to act as vice chair of this meeting? Yeah, you should do. You should the meetings with yes. um, Councillor Kirley acts as my vice chair. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Second item on the agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting, which are included in your agenda pack. Is it uh, your wish that I sign these as a true record of the previous meeting? Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, item three is declarations of interest. No further declarations? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Well. Uh, on the item, the last item, which is um, an employee application. Um, I know both applicants reasonably well. The last occasion it was for it, I was uh, I declared a person of prejudice, and I shall do the same on this occasion. Thank you very much. <coughs> no further declarations. Uh, public question time. Question time. We have no no one ready to, to speak, so I'll move straight on to item five, which is uh, planning application twenty one stroke. 00311 which is land to the north of Somerton Road, adjacent to White Bungalows, Somerton Road, Langport. Colin, I believe this one's with you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, committee members may remember this application, which was presented to the committee just before Christmas, where it was resolved to unanimously approve the application. It's being referred back to committee for the sole reason that education has reduced its section 106 contributions from 1,183,000 to 410,000. This is on the basis that the Education Authority has revisited its school capacity requirements since its initial request. In line with the scheme of delegation, any significant change in section 106 requires to be referred back to committee for ratification. This is the site uh, with the land board to the left, we to the north, some Calways development to the west of William Lane, Summerton Road to the south, Bart Elms and Brook Road's development to the south. Uh, the white bungalow on the corner. The division in the land follows an historic boundary and separates the land in different ownerships. This is an old aerial photo which shows the historic division of the land. Slightly zoomed in. This is the site. Like any road, William Lane, Salton Road. This is an aerial photograph of the site showing it in relation to the to the build development. Again, zoomed, zoomed in slightly. 
This is the site layout. I'll turn to this uh, later, but just to give you context for the photographs, which I'm going to run through next. This is a photograph of the site, the roundabout behind, and the bottom that ends on the right. <coughs> Put up the site with white bungalow to the rear and one over to the left. Moving along the road towards the site, a bungalow there. <coughs> it's just a wide angle view over the, over the site. And moving along Summerton Road towards the site. This is the boundary of the site going along here and back. White bungalow and the access point roughly central to the site. You know, the site near yeah, again coming near the edge of the boundary, which falls along here, around here. Standing at the edge of the site, which follows the line here. Run in the distance. This says the uh, this pole marks the marks the boundary of the of the site. We're going to run around there. Looking towards Cowways at the edge of the site here. Site roughly follows that line across where those uh, telegraph poles are. And get over the site. It's more in the distance there. And I come along the right. Come, come, come. This is taken from the existing field access. White bungalow is behind this hedge on the right. Kelway's development on the left there. And one in the area there. Again, looking looking back along from the the, uh, the site access, the new access is going to go through roughly roughly that point there. There's all. This is a, an indicative master plan showing the potential layout of the site, which is a, a central spine road with spurs off. The south schemes have been incorporated along the site and road. An open space up on the top, top right. Indicates that up to 100 dwellings can be comfortably accommodated in the site, leaving room for open space. There's sufficient separation distance between neighboring residential properties, not to impact their privacy and amenity. The open space officer has commented that this space here would be better positioned centrally. This is something that can be designed into the Scheme that reserve matters. The site is highly visible along Summerton Road and Wareham Lane. The indicative layout shows landscaping on the, on, on the edges of the, the, uh, the scheme that over time will soften the appearance. However, in the short, short term, it will be obvious. There are no, by, no nearby listed buildings that would be impacted. Southwest, Southwest Heritage Trust have indicated that the trial trenches indicate that evidence of Roman occupation and has requested a condition that ensures watching and recording during the construction period in compliance with a written scheme of investigation. As mentioned, this is an indicative layout with only the fixed access aspect being the access which is taken centrally in the site. Rose access is through a single point in the hedge stroke wall, which is supposed to remove eight meters of the hedge wall to create the access and provide visibility. The highway authority have not objected to the proposal and have recommended conditions and the travel ban plan to be secured by a section 106 agreement. This is an extract from the adopted local plan showing policy LMT2, direction of growth. The red line is the proposed site. Policy seeks to maintain separation with the village of Warren to the north. 
Forward boundary of the site must not go further north than indicated by the area of the direction of growth. Approximately 250 meter separation distance is maintained, which is considered to be sufficient to prevent coalescence. The consideration for the committee to take into account is that the principle of development is established by the adopted local plan policy LMT2, direction of growth subject to non-coalescence with well into the north. The site is highly visible from the main Summerton Road for approximately 300 metres and 200 metres along one lane. The phosphate mitigation solution involves Abri's fitting of water saving devices to its portfolio of housing within the catchment area. This strategy has been approved by Natural England and the Council and to be secured by a Section 1 agreement with every party to the Section 1 agreement. All technical consultees have responded positively. The Highway Authority have not objected to the proposal subject to conditions and a Section 106 to secure a travel plan. The Education Authority have reviewed, reviewed its request for contributions from 1,183,000 thousand to four hundred and ten thousand. This is on the basis that the Education Authority has revisited its school capacity requirements since its initial request. But it's recognised that this is a significant reduction in contributions on the basis that the education does not require that level of contributions for school spaces. It is necessary to reduce the request to comply with the Section 1063 tests in that it is necessary to make the development acceptable in planning terms, directly related to the development, and fairly and reasonably related in scale and current and real development. These tests are set out as statutory tests in regulation and as policy tests in the National Planning Policy Framework. The tests make the request for the higher contribution or its transfer to other areas of council ultra virus and open to challenge. On this basis, it is recommended to the committee that the application be approved subject to conditions and a Section 106 agreement to secure phosphate mitigation using Avery's mitigation solution, provisional affordable housing to include a cascade allocation mechanism as previously resolved by the committee, highway infrastructure and works, the reduced education contribution, a travel plan, management of public open spaces, and NHS contributions as set there in the committee report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, we have two speakers on this application. The first is an objector, Jude Mitchell. Jude Mitchell present. Okay. Hmm? Is it really? We can't hear anything. Jean Mitchell. We haven't heard a word. Sorry, what was your name? Mitchell. Yeah, Jean Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. If you'd like to take a seat up at the um, that's right. Take a seat there. Okay. No, not really. And I have. We haven't heard a word of what's been said. But anyway, I don't know why. I'm, yeah, I'll have to. So okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll put that one on for you. Right. Um, when you're ready to speak, then you get your three minutes to speak. Okay. So, yeah. I'm um, ready now. You, you, you can carry on now. Okay. Well, we are the owners of the white bungalow, which has been given as the location of this development. Now. I've only got one question, but what is going to happen with the gate, which is next to our boundary, which has been locked? How is that going to be used? And is it a long term? OK, uh, we normally expect um, uh, 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 an objection uh, rather than clarification of the actual detail. But in this particular case, uh, I think uh, 
uh, what I'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you with an answer when the officer gives his uh, response to the speakers, OK? You'll come back to us uh, with... If you, if you wait for a few minutes, we'll get you an answer. Right. Just, do I stay here? Yeah, no, you go back to you. Journal of Clarity, was there anything else that you wanted to say? No, not really. Okay, thank you. Um, the, uh, the next speaker we have is Alex Bullock, who's the African. <laughs> Chair, yeah, members, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak on behalf of the application. My name is Alex Bullock and I'm the Head of Planning at Land Value Alliances and an Associate Partner. This application before you was considered by this committee on the 19th of September 2023, where the Select Committee voted unanimously to approve the subject to the completion of a Section 106. Importantly, and perhaps unusually since it was last reported to this committee, there have been no changes to planning policy, including nationally, there have been no change in the material considerations. There have been no change, we would suggest, in the balancing exercise undertaken by officers. So what has changed and why is the application being reconsidered? Since the December committee, the applicant has drafted a section 106, which was submitted to officers on the 16th of April 2024, and have been pressing officers for some time for the council to instruct a solicitor with an appropriate undertaking to be given by the applicant. The only change is in respect of the requested education contribution, Members will be aware that the test for planning obligations are that they must be necessary to make the development acceptable in planning terms, directly related to the development and fairly and reasonably related in scale and time to the development, so as to comply with Regulation 122 of the seal regulations. Should an obligation not satisfy this test, then such an obligation would be unlawful. Indeed, the committee report on of December made clear under the heading Section 106 planning obligation that the Grant Plan Commission was subject to the prior completion of a Section 106 in a form acceptable to the council solicitors. Post committee, the education authority to consultation response to the evidence underpinning that was reviewed and found to be incorrect. The education authority has agreed that based on their own evidence, there is not justification for address a secondary school contribution and that primary school contribution has been adjusted to correspond with the total number of places required from the development, taking account of existing and projected capacity. The SEN contribution remains unchanged. The Education Authority confirmed its revised position on the 30th of April 2024, and on the same day, the applicant reaffirmed its position to meet any justified obligation in full. They made clear in their response that the revised position is one that will meet the seal requirements. Their previous position clearly would not. To conclude, the reasons on which this application was voted unanimously to approve in December 2023 have not changed, and we consider it would be unreasonable for a different position to be reached. We are at an advanced position with the draft section drafted Section 106, and we are now in a very advanced dialogue over the sale of the land to Avery. To move up towards a completion, we need a completed Section 106 and a decision notice. We respectfully request that you follow your officer recommendation and your resolution from December 23 and vote to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for staying well within the time. Are there any points you would like to respond to in terms of these two presentations? Thank you, Chair. Just to clarify on, on the gate next to the white bundle. I, I understand that this thing out there. I think all the microphone the towards, towards you. Response for you. Very, very, very quiet. This gentleman is responding to the Yes, okay. I can't hear. Can you hear now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll speak much, much closer to the microphone. Um, yeah, the, the, that access has not been gated. Uh, people have been using that as a, a kind of shortcut around the back instead of going the long way around the uh, right away. So we've been using it informally to access the uh, the right away that goes up to us to Clack Lane up to, to work. It has been gated. To, to prevent people sort of just crossing over that land. During the reserve matters application, it's uh, it's our intention to, to discuss with the, the applicant 
the potential of having a pathway or footway around that, around the uh, around the back of the uh, white one, or around the back of your property, so that people can carry on using that as a, as an access. Um, well, just on foot. Just on foot, yes. It won't be used as a vehicular access. No. Okay. Will it be used in the development? No, no. The 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 development will be accessed through its uh, main access, which is in the middle of the the field. Right. Uh, okay. Thank you for that. I think if there are any further points of clarification, um, that can be dealt with after the after the meeting. Right. Can Can you see the uh, the layout? The uh, yeah. This, this is your property here, the, the white bungalow. That's right. This is where the access will be here. Yes. That's the field access that you're talking about there. Yes. That's currently gated. Yes, a wide gate has been erected and locked. Correct. But it will only be used for pedestrians. Correct, yes. That's it. That's if it, uh, if we manage to negotiate with the uh, with the applicant on on having footpath here because currently the footpath goes up up around this way here. That is the the public right of way. But people have been using it as a shortcut through round the back onto the public right. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay, and uh, a bit to move this forward. Do members have any points of clarification or points raised by? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think somebody should point out that that is not that gate is not a right of way, and it should be blocked off and locked because the right of way starts considerably further down the road, and unless they apply to divert the right of way, there is no legal access through that gate. Full stop. Could you please say that? Oh, right. that, that's, that, that is correct. There is no legal access through there for, for warrants. I'll talk to you about that. Uh, okay, do members have any um, queries on the uh, presentations from, uh, from the officer? Talk to you later. Mm -hmm. In which case, do any members have any points of debate that they wish to uh, raise? Okay. Councillor Webb. Yeah. Thank you. I'm only ready to clarify uh, the fact that the uh, education amount has been changed because of our own officers finding a mistake. And therefore, that's the reason it's in front of us today. So uh, that that uh, just to clarify that, and that is the case. Um, I would be uh, hoping to move the vote to uh, any moment. Okay, um, you answered the question. Go, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chair. It, it, it wasn't a mistake. It's just that the. the yeah, they, it's been revised because the 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 uh, yeah the, the spaces have changed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just the best. Yeah. All I would say is I hope that this is correct because after the mistake they made on the Ulster, uh, where they've gone the other way and not put enough money in, then it would have serious consequences. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would love to take this £700,000 to be able to reinvest it in something else in the community. We just can't do that. So I think as far as I can see, the material reasons are pretty much unchanged from before. Yeah, thank you. Can I second, please, Mr Chairman? So, okay, so you're going to present your recommendation. Oh, he's coming up. That's his seconding it. Um, in which case, let's go straight to the vote. Uh, can we see all of those in favour of the approval in accordance with the recommendation? Interesting. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. The next item uh, on the agenda is uh, only application 240418FUL, which is to Or or Orchard Cottage, Snag Lane and Port Janice. Gives a few minutes. Uh, the officer's just changing over to be a different case officer. Right. Which is the running application 004184, which is that Joseph Orchard Cottage, Snow Glen, Wing Canton, and Stanley Norris is the planning officer. Stanley. Thank you, Chair. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, so this is a flat location at Orchard Cottage, Snag Lane, for the erection of a, uh, a single self built dwelling uh, to run you through some plans and packages. Okay, so a red, light, a red side line plan showing the the location of uh, the Stan Cottage, Orchard Cottage. So you'll note to the north is the A303. Um, there's a small, there's a small cluster of properties in the vicinity. And then, okay, just a zoomed out version. You know, the the massing of the camp is to the north. Uh, there's a, a cluster of properties around it, and some to the south. And then you sort of farms and farm farmhouses and converted farms and whatnot. Okay, so same again, just an aerial view. Um, no, obviously, open countryside beyond. And again, the closer up one, just showing the location of the site. Uh, note the verdant nature of it, and see the fish of the free of feeding it. Okay, so just some, some photos from members to get the bearings. Uh, this is taken on Common Road. Uh, just Essentially going over the um, over the bridge over the three hundred three, 
Uh, so this car in the distance, it's here. Car, if you can see it, is um, coming out of Snag Lane, which is where the application site is. And then again, on, on, on Common Lane, Common Road, sorry, looking towards Concanto with the application, with the, the dwelling being positioned on the right hand side there. And same again, so just at the entrance to Snag Lane, uh, just to show you the numbers. Okay, so just a couple of photos here of Stag Lane, uh, the nature of the highway, the um, single track nature, low traffic, no pavement, street lighting, and whatnot. Okay, and then on to the uh, actual application access. Um, so this is the existing actual access for the Orchard Cottage. Um, no, that garage there, which serves, up, serves Orchard Cottage, will remain with the access through that gate in the middle. And um, there's a paddock on the right, which that which will remain. Okay, so just going down the access track there uh, towards the proposed dwelling. And again, down that access track, just looking to the right, uh, you've got Vine House and the Coach House just there, which are the two properties in the vicinity. And again, yeah, so just a few um, a few photos of the of the garden where the dwelling will be built. There will obviously a lot, quite a lot of trees and vegetation. And again, looking towards Snag Lane, the dwelling. Uh, you know, uh, there's a single story extension occurring under the uh, under the construction. Okay, so just wider side photos. You see you know, uh, a large amount of greenery. And again, just turning around slightly. Uh, currently, the, currently in the Bob Orchard Cottage, there is this a mobile home, a workshop, and sort of a, a large shed. Um, the mobile home and the larger shed would be removed, while the workshop would be retained as part of the development. So the the mobile home there and the, that structure would be removed. The proposed dwelling would be sort of sited where that mobile home is. They okay. can. Small photos and the workshop, which will remain essentially the photo spelling would be to the left hand side of that. Uh, just looking at that, that's uh, so just some wider context for members. Um, here we are back on Snag Lane. This is Orchard Cottage again. Picture that I'm showing the nature of the highway. Uh, it's an unadopted highway, uh, it's not an updated right way, but it's quite a busy footpath, which sort of then will walk us going accessing the countryside government. And again, that's it on the plans. So you members can actually see that. But the um, obviously the red line goes. <laughs> but um, so. We can see it. There's a small sort of red area here, which is um, the proposed dwelling. Orchard Cottage is obviously to the north and would have a large garden sort of retained, and uh, a sizable amenity space would be provided for a new dwelling. Um, the location plan, which is a bit clearer, thankfully, um, it shows obviously the size of the nature. nature. Um, it had a mobile home. The existing store and the workshop are highlighted in sort of the left bottom left hand corner of the site. Um, the workshop that most left the building would remain with the other two structures removed to make way for the dwelling. Um, so there's the, the original proposed dwelling, the sort of an L shape, quite contemporary nature. Um, um, so the floor plan shows a um, a single bedroom with a associated wet room, the ground floor with your home office, etc. And then two two bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. Um, as part of the two-story element, the single story element will be set under a green roof. And again, okay, so on to the elevations now. You know, um, obviously a large single story element with two story element above. Just flick through these. So 
their misperceptions and at the end as well to hit artistic impressions. Just obviously a lot clearer than some drawing sometimes as you imagine it normal. And there's a CGI image shows sort of a natural stone walls under a green roof. So principles of the principles of Edmund, but this application has come to a committee at the request of um, Councillor Baker, given the, the, the support from the parish council, the joining parish council, and also been a, a degree of labour support. Um, the officer, there's no concerns regarding biodiversity or phosphates as outside the catchment and the ecology survey has been um, submitted. There are no highway safety issues, landscape impact or residential amenity issues. Nevertheless, uh, due to the separance of the site from the encounter and as a result of the A3 train, uh, which formed a strong boundary with the massing of the to the north, the project was considered to fall within the countryside and therefore was considered to be an inappropriate form of development contrary to local bank policy. Uh, that bit, uh, the, the local bank policy, the local planning already does not consider that the benefits associated with the uh, provision of single dwelling in this location would outweigh the outweigh the harm caused, and as such, it is recommended for refusal. Thank you. We have um, three speakers um, uh, on this. Um, Charles Gillespie, the updates. Yep. <coughs> Yeah, well, we were actually sort of debating running order. Um, is, is, it, is that open to? If you can stick with the uh, yeah. people's of the council, that would be absolutely great. Um, well, Chair and members, thank you. Um, I was planning on spending slightly shorter talking about this because the considerations are um, the, the architecture of this actually sort of pales into slight insignificance in terms of those proposals based upon the actual proximity. This is an issue more with the proximity of dwelling itself. What I wanted to talk about wasn't as much the architecture. I wasn't going to go into the end of the degree in terms of how the building looks the way it does, but I was going to talk a little bit about the process and how this process driven and how the briefing exercise, we always engage in a very detailed uh, and yeah, fun exercise by clients on one-off dwellings. Uh, establishing what their brief is actually going into it. This one is particularly special based upon uh, our clients' health conditions. Um, I'm already early on, so Parkinson. Yeah, so Mike has Parkinson's. So there's a very functional aspect of the brief that had to be satisfied. So a dwelling needed to serve Mike's short, medium and long term uh, needs. But what was very clear about the briefing exercise is that the functional aspect of this didn't override the fact it needed to be Mike and Sarah's home. Uh, so it had to be a exceptional piece of architecture to, to marry with that functional side of the brief. So we engaged in that process and we went through quite a detailed feasibility period where we looked at sort of adaptation of the existing dwelling site. We looked at the siting of this building itself. Uh, and whether the plot, the existing curtilage of Orchard Cottage could support that. And the other thing to sort of tally with that is the special nature and character of that site. The site has a number of mature and varied tree species. So the L-shaped plan Stan alluded to is um, a, a sort of a direct relation to that brief and the outcome of it. So the organisation of this property serving that functional need is very linear in plan. So it's at this space to be adapted. Um, the, the master suite is clearly a core consideration because most needs are going to change dramatically in, in the sort of medium and long term future. Uh, kitchen space is the same, has to be fully adaptable. And then the, 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 the double story element of the building is effectively going to be uh, guest accommodation for family in future years. And the plan, we, we went through a, um, we had a, a fairly detailed foreign cultural report written up for this, which identified the, um, the, 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 the truths that needed to be retained. So the final part is the, um, the, the immunity and the access to immunity. And we went through Mike and Sarah, the, 
the the, the fact that Mike would be able to access the core amenities of the encounter rally. Um, so the outcome of that process, we believe, is a um, an exceptional design, not so much in terms of its architecture, but um, it is a summary of that brief end process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mike, I believe you're down to uh, speak as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, I think Charles has partly taken the wind out of my sails. But there we go. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Mike Buller, and I'm, as you probably guessed, I'm the applicant. I'd like to thank the committee and the chair for allowing me the opportunity to, to explain why this application is so important to my wife and I. We're both local, we both grew up in the area. Indeed, I went to school in the Cairns and my father was a banker for many years. Work and life saw us move away in the late 1990s and in 2018, whilst I was working in Leeds, I was diagnosed with central sleep apnea. This led me to retiring early in 2019. We, were, we returned to Wincanton early in 2019, um, primarily for me to look after my aging mother, who unfortunately passed away in December last year. In 2020, the diagnosis for central sleep apnea was proven to be incorrect. It was then that I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, a disease which I'm sure you're all aware there is no cure for. Before my mother's death, she gifted Sarah and Arnie half of her substantial garden in the hopes that we would be able to build a bespoke home that would provide for my current and my ongoing needs. With Parkinson's disease, it's very hard to predict the way in which it would develop and what issues and challenges Sarah and I and my family might, check, might face as we get forward. Most people will associate it with a tremor, which I do have intermittently, However, the more debilitating physical effects are tiredness, stiffness, rigidity, and balance issues. All of those I have, but please don't ask me to demonstrate them today. <laughs> I'm lucky in a way that um, my symptoms at the moment are fairly mild because it is fairly early, but they will get worse. It's impossible to say how fast the disease will progress. All I know is that it is de degenerative and we have to plan for our future based on that. The application you see before you has been driven by my possible future needs. The whole concept revolving around an accessible home that, can, that sits comfortably on its half acre plot amongst the existing mature trees. There is one final point I would like to make, and the council used the A303 as an arbitrary boundary for, them, for Wincanton. For me, Snag Lane is the perfect location. It gives me easy access to Wincanton, both on foot, a mobility scooter, or using an electric wheelchair. Indeed, there's a footpath right to the end of Snag Lane, and our driveway is 50 yards down Snag Lane. The nature of the design and the site, sorry, the nature of the site and the design of the house means that we will be able to live our full lives to, to our potential, regardless of how my Parkinson's develops. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. The final speaker that we have is uh, Lydia. Uh, is it Dunn? Dunn, um, yes. Thank you. And <laughs> um, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Lydia Dunn from White Acre Planning. I'm the agent. And as we've heard from the officer, this is quite an interesting case in planning terms. Um, it is the other side of the A303, but there is a contradiction, I think, um, given that it's so accessible, the site is so accessible to the town. As Stanley said, all matters apart from the principle are accepted. So the design is high quality, developed in response to the character of the site and the applicant's personal needs. There are no adverse impacts on amenity, either of neighbouring properties or future residents. There are no adverse impacts on biodiversity and highway safety. Um, Mike Bellamy of Bellamy Transport has advised in the in development of the scheme and his access statement sets out the acceptability of the scheme in transport terms. This application is before you because officers consider the location to be unsustainable. This is apparently because of the lack of safe, convenient accessibility to essential services. 
In fact, as Mike Bellamy and I have set out in our statements, the town centre is within very comfortable walking distance. It's well within the 800 metre distance defined as walkable in the manual of the streets. It's very easily accessible by bicycle. And there is a large range of key bus services that run from the bus station and from the high street. And a very quick note just on Snag Lane itself. Snag Lane, I think, is an adopted highway, actually, but it is a no through road that's very lightly trafficked and safe to walk. In this location, residents would not be reliant on the car. There are ample opportunities to travel by sustainable means in line with the MPPF. We do, of course, understand the policy complications here. However, given the housing land supply position, the special personal housing need in this case, high, the high quality design of the scheme and the lack of adverse impacts, we believe that the planning balance weighs strongly in favour of the scheme. The application has strong local support and we would be incredibly grateful for yours too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we now move on to points of uh, technical questions. So, uh, Tom. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. It's not much of a technical question at all. Um, and, and as we well, look at the debate one, we can really do this. Oh, one. sorry. Uh, I'll leave it to pay. Councillor Wayne. Yes. Can I have the officer's uh, opinion, really? I mean, on all applications for well, an unfortunate number of years, we've heard about this tipping point. In reflect in relation to um, the housing supply, um, it seems to me that this application, uh, because of its non-sustainability, uh, that tips it over sufficiently to not a, not approve it. Is that is that what you're saying? Because we have we haven't got the five year that housing supply, therefore, is the sustainability point sufficient for us to to not take that into account yes well essentially in my, in my view the the fact that it's in our view it's an unsustainable location is not outweighed by the provision of a single dwelling um, given that this um as the um, as the presenter has, has explained, it's a single street. It's literally Wincanton, the other side of the bridge. Yeah. Instantly, you're into the built-up area of Wincanton. Yeah. It's pavement all the way from the site. I'm not entirely sure if there's a drop curve opposite, but that would be about the only impediment uh, would be drop curves if you want to use an ability scooter. And the distance is about 200 metres less to the middle of the town centre's high street area than it is for me to come down the hill from my house to uh, the Asda. So I'm struggling with having got to unsustainable limits because this is clearly a government top uh, site that wouldn't be available to, mm -hmm. to plan. How did you get to unsustainable? Is it just literally the 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 three and three is on the map? Well yeah the in our view the um the, the 303 forms a strong boundary for, for Wincanton, and then we then want to uh, encourage building on that. It forms a, a strong settlement boundary, as is also outlined in the Wincanton Town Plan. Um, in the local plan, it's outlined as that as well. Um, I know what you're saying. It, you know, well, there is sort of probably 50 metres of unlit um, unpaved access down the snag lane to the dwelling. And then you do come to the yeah. Ted Footbridge, uh, which leads you into the town. Um, so I mean that is for the members to debate if they want to if they if they want to say this is a stable development, then that it is up to you. Thank you. That's a, that's a good question. So have we only have any other questions of notification? That's a question. In this sustainable development, how many trees are going to be affected, please, um, with this application? Uh, in terms of trees, um, I'll take you back to the site. Um, um, 
and also the report has been sort of commissioned. Um, all the sort of the mature boundary trees will be retained. The sort of the, the lower quality younger trees and shrubs within the act within the garden will, will be gone. Um, but the mature boundary treatment will be retained. Excellent. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. So no TPOs or anything? There's no no protected trees on that side at all. Okay, we've got four points of clarification. Um, I suggest we move to the debate. Uh, Councillor Power, I believe you would want the parts of this to be uh, considered for. Yes. Well, I was one of two. Um, Lucy as well, but Lucy can't be here. Um, as as the local board member, I, I walk up and down that quite frequently anyway, and it is very sustainable. It's very quick, easy um, your path um, to the centre of town. Um, and also being quite close to the 303, it's quite good for transporting the hospital treatment, etc. Um, as you said about the five year land supply, um, I think, you know, surely this is a bonus for helping us meet our um, housing needs in Wincanton. Um, so I would like to propose that we um, accept um, this application. Thank you. Um, could I just call again that we haven't debated? Oh, sorry, we would accept it. Sorry, my third panel makes an other track. Sorry, is that so? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's proposing that you might want some, you might want to put some conditions in there if there were any uh, oh, okay. uh, uh, support okay. or any forms of cargo for the sport. Uh, Councillor Webb. No, I, I was uh, I was just going to second the. Uh, uh, are you happy to hold off the seconding of all the proposals to just accept? Because I believe we would normally put conditions on an application. Yeah. And there are some in the report, so. Okay. I'll hold on then to uh, conditions. Are perhaps in order to clear the way, um, I could ask the other side if he's considered that he might wish to uh, support this application. And if somebody had any conditions in mind, could he please take us through them? Yeah, no, he might be. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the conditions, all, all fairly standard. Um, obviously, the time, three years, the plans, um, the details and materials to be submitted, um, removal of PD rights. Uh, um, the recommendations and enhancements included from the ecology survey submitted, um, as well as a lighting scheme for bats um, and the standard uh, standard condition regarding tree protection. Yeah. Yeah. And this may be should that all. So I'm assuming that as the proposal, you'd be happy to uh, uh, to maybe your proposal to. Um, Accept subject to those conditions. We also should suggest we need a reason why we're uh, or why we're accepting the probably the flip side of what we had before. Uh, perhaps still the elements of wording. In fair and reason fair earlier. The proposal is considered to represent an acceptable form of development that respects the character of the area and causes no demonstrable harm to residential amenity, ecology, or the highway network in accordance with the aims and objectives of quality testing by EQ2, EQ4, TA5, TA6, and the local strand, yeah. and the aims and objectives of the FDPF 23. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Does your second also agree? I agree, John. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in that case, we have um, a, a proposal to debate. Um, uh, which is different from them. Uh, can I just quickly uh, talk to some of the other members? Um, that's not the best. Um, I have no problem with this application. And the reason I say that is that Snag Lane is never going to be a two lane highway <laughs> leading to a housing estate. Um, it is too narrow and it's too small. Um, I do understand the officers Dags, but I'd like to point out to him that the Wincanton Sports Centre is the wrong side of the 303, a little bit further north. <laughs> well, students. No, I don't have much to say. Um, thank you for your very emotive narrative, but what a stunning property. Suppose. Yeah, I would totally support the board member and the uh, recommendation. I can't see any problems with this. That's so good. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I'd say I would always support the officer's decision unless I see some compelling evidence. <laughs> when I was looking at the paperwork on this, I just did not see that in the case. But having heard the speakers, I have to say I have sympathy and understanding to the medical needs. Yet I am minded that that building is permanent, so that that building is going to continue after the, the, the current occupant. However, the high quality of the building, I think, 
it you know, speaks for itself. I, I have to say, on balance, I think I would support this. Um, but I think that's quite unusual if you go against the officer's recommendation, but I think there is some compelling evidence on this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for my part, I mean, uh, I agree. We're very lucky to have that location. Um, I don't know who owns the blue and yet that was part of the lane, but clearly it wasn't blocking any traffic. So, um, so it's a really quiet day. Um, and um, the only question I would have is whether or not you need to get a drop building, because um, as you go up the hill, there are a number of uh, areas where it's traditional old built stones, and uh, you might need a road go. Uh, I, I'm quite content that this is a sustainable location and a good building for the future as well as for yourselves, being sort of designed for ourselves. But uh, I'm, I'm quite clear that the uh, design is such that it can be a very good residence for others in the future. So um, I'm pleased to see that we have a proposal uh, and a seconder. Uh, so what I would do is call members for a vote on that. So we've got a proposal from Castle Power, which is to accept subject to conditions. Uh, for the reasons given. Mr. Mayor. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work. The next application before us is agenda item seven uh, for British Motor Silver Street Swing Council. Um, this is before you big goals, um, as you know, uh, uh, we've got a conservation area, um, list of buildings and numbers, um, uh, parts from the uh, conservation and supplies, which we call it. So, who, who's actually here? Is this the idea? Okay? That's the day. Yes, I mean, uh, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, so this application in front of you is an advert application. Um, it relates to the former British Motors site on Silk Street and Canton, uh, which was previously uh, granted consent for the conversion into a one stop convenience store. Okay, so the yeah. There is a, a site location of the, um, the application site. Uh, you know, knows from Canton particularly well. Um, you'd have sort of so, you know, the school up to the batch, the sort of the left hand side of the picture, and um, down to the right is sort of the high street. Uh, you've got the Millers in up to the south. Okay, so it's just a zoomed out version. Um, yeah, so the high, uh, we can high street leads just up. In, up here, um, Churchill's Churchill the former council office is just here for reference. Okay, so just some aerial aerial views and further out on this. Uh, here is a sort of a, a heritage assets map. So the application site here, members can see that. Um, it lies just outside of the designated conservation area and uh, away from listed buildings, but um, given it's adjacent, the setting of the conservation area is, is a, a material consideration. Uh, so here you ask, here's an old site photo, just in case members recognise this building, um, when it was Bridge Motors, and the works have been well underway to convert it to the convenience store. <coughs> Okay, so I'd say it works are well in the way. The tour of the site. Uh, you'll know sort of the, the church in the background, the villas in the Jason. Again, looking down the batch towards the properties on Silver Street, the building on the right. 
uh, sort of stood on the on the flank of the building a few months to upstream. And again, a picture of the men is in with Travis, you know, Travis Perkins in the background. So it is a, it is a bit what's predominantly a residential area. There are sort of commercial uses within the vicinity. And right on to the proposals. So these are this is an amended an amended plan. The conservation officer had previously um, have submitted a formal objection um, onto the, the original proposal, which saw sort of um, well, this, this provision is in grayscale. The original was sort of quite bright um, face, uh, pictures. Um, the the fascia sign is remains as per the original, which I'm not sure that the uh, conservation officer had any room issue with. I think it was the vinyl the vinyl stickers. Um, onto the other sort of advertisements, obviously park um, parking signs, and then just the vinyl details. The will be alone. Uh, externally illuminated. Uh, the details of the Indonesia. And again, um, I'll obviously also a, a small small advertisement for the ATM, which is been permitted. Um, and a map showing the location of the proposed adverts. So obviously got the ATM down this side, um, the, the facial sign above the door, and the the images on the northern and eastern flank. I'll just take you back to, to that one. Okay, so potentially the key consideration is the impact of the on the carriage and appearance of the conservation area. So the initial plan was received a formal objection from the Conservation officer, and as such, the new scheme which has been put forward. Uh, it's not massively different, obviously, the, the colours have been altered to reduce the impact. The conservation, conservation officer has withdrawn his formal objections on the basis of the new plan, however, has suggested that there will still be its degree of harm, which will need to be weighed up against the associated benefits of providing and storing this location as uh, uh, characteristics of the MP MPPF. Ultimately, it's the officer's view that the, the provision of a store in this location is, is a, sufficient to offset the harm caused to the, the character appearance of the conservation area. And, and it is therefore recommended for approval. Um, it is worth noting that advertisement concerns do differ from planning applications in which if you are um, obviously with a planning application, if there are elements you don't like, you cannot approve parts of it. Whereas on an advertisement consent, you can issue a split decision. Um, yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Do you have any points of clarification? Well, I'll, I have one, which is. Um, can you spare the go first? You can go to the Yeah. Well, points of clarification, the terminology used here is grayscale. Um, I was wondering whether um, uh, the, there's a reason why grayscale rather than monitor had been fit, because it does strike me that gray is not actually termed with the red sign and the, uh, the wall, certain, uh, wall finish. And I was wondering, you know, providing it's not uh, a full RGB print, you know, to have it in shades of, um, uh, of a sepia colour or a techno or a brown or a, a warm grey as opposed to a monochrome grey just seems to me um, uh, a wise wiggle group. I would be honest, graphic design is not my strong point. Um, I'm just reading from the, from the plant. Um, yes, they, they're entitled grayscale rather well than coloured. So there's no particular reason that uh, it just happens to be written to grace here. Councillor Lopez. OK, guys, I'm going to go back in history mm -hmm. a little bit, not far. If you go to the map that shows on the red line where the new um, store is going to be, 
and look to the side of it, you'll see a thing saying LB. Okay, the white room of the building to the south. White room of the building. Go back one. The white room of the building to the south. And it got closed down by your predecessor who bought it out and converted it into a house because he couldn't make money on it in that location. I find it quite interesting that we are talking about moving a store out of the high street down into an area where there is no other commercial um, retail outlets. There is Travis Perkins directly opposite the site. Um, and I don't understand why we are attempting to build that far outside the centre of Wynne County. Um, if I may, uh, so the store has already been commissioned. Yeah. Uh, this is solely it's only the site. It's only the site. This is solely, no, solely for the adverts. Um, during the consideration of of the store, uh, they the applicant did submit a sequential test, um, and yeah, there was no there was no was objection, but that, that that now has consent. John okay, then no further um, points of uh, yeah, clarification. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bird, very long. Am I being right when I um, read it? Because I think the conversation said that the decals could uh, be black or white. Black and white. Is that right? So I read that. Oh, I did that wrong. I had a conversation with Lucy about this. Because the decals, it was either going to be in colour, but they might possibly have been black and white. So in, the, in his formal response, the, so the advertisements would be harmful to the setting, however, the revisions brackets in black and white do the least harm to the conservation area. I can't support the application, but you may decide there is a public benefit associated with the development. Okay, so no further clarification will um, suggest we move on to the debate. Uh, Councillor Pat, you want to leave us off? Um, I mean, two, two ways about this one, really, I'm, I'm still not sort of the first to apologise, um, is I suppose my residents that face opposite the shop and they're worried about the light pollution, for example, coming in. Um, we've got also there's parking issues massively. I mean, because I live at the top of the hill, West Hill, so when I drive down, it's stop and start. And there can be quite a few accidents there at the moment, but that's what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, I've also voiced their opinions about the lighting. Um, which I feel if it's shining into their houses, and I mean, it, when I walk, I walk out from the pub at night, sometimes it's very dark down the area of town, it's got uh, mild street lighting, um, but I think that light pollution, when you go down to Morrison's and Lizards, for example, the light pollution is quite big. I know it's a smaller um, development, but light pollution is um, one of their key concerns. Thank you. So, suppose there is only, only one light which essentially will sit over the facial side. Um, if, if you can see that, it's a sort of a drop light, just sit, sit above and give it a, a, a design to give it a, a gentle glow so you know it's there. Um, obviously, we can condition it that if it is to be approved, I know I've already had conditioned it, sorry, that um, out, out of store hours, it, it shouldn't be on. Um, I think store hours, I think that's to be. It was conditioned on the previous permission, I think it's either 10 or 11 o'clock. So after that, there should be no light coming from the side or so like, like associated with that, with the use. Okay, um, given that we've got that established, do you want to say? I just said what uh, Tony said about the security lights, obviously that wasn't the main concern. Um, it was just talking about the commercial side of it. Thank you. So you'll support with the application. Council Webb? No. no. Okay, well, from the chair, then I'll move the um, uh, move the officer's recommendation. Council Best. I'll second it. Okay, okay, I'm going to move the officer's recommendation. Council Best? Second again. Thank yeah, you. I'll second the proposal. So those in favour of the officer's recommendation, please show. Then once again, thank you very much.
that brings us to our uh, last planning application. Um, I have to all. withdraw on this one. I'm great. Is there anything other than the? I've read the appeals. Will there anything else, Chairman, that I need to stay for? Uh, no, but um, as you will wish to note it, that the uh, meeting, which was originally scheduled for the 25th of June, has been moved to the 9th of July. Yep. It is the elections of Gatter Chamber meeting to give us the uh, election preparation. Thanks. So there will be two meetings in July. Thank the, you. The 9th and the 23rd. Thank you very much. Yes, So now we will move to item eight, which is the planning application 24005684 at Stilford Farm, Hilford Lane, Elton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so it's worth noting that this Great. Um, so this application is only with us today because the applicant, well, one of the applicants, um, is a member of staff in the planning department. There's been no sort of third party objection that the parish, uh, the parish council is supportive, so ordinarily it would be in front of you today. Okay, so just to um, take you through, through some plan, uh, plans. So the red line, red line site plan, it's quite, it, it's a rural area. Um, you know, there's a, a scattered properties around it, but other than that, you know, open countryside to the south. And west and north beyond. And just for, for, to emphasise that point, it is an overall situation. Again, as per normal, as per usual, just some satellite imagery for you. And then also some side photos. Uh, members might remember this site, I think you saw it just uh, February um, for an extension for both two store extensions in the rear. Um, so if you remember it right. So site access, which serves the um, agricultural holding behind and the dwelling there is in the farm. Um, so the just looking back towards the dwelling, which will be extended uh, substantially into the bridge here, there is this sort of the boundary hedge there, which the proposed building will be set up on. And then looking to the west, um, the all the existing hedgerows will remain. And trees have been no, no impact on those. And then sort of standing on the location site, um, looking to the east, see a very, very agricultural nature. And again, sort of looking back to the west, um, a, a Welsh green field, well, yeah, Welsh green field with hedges with not a lot of sort of development beyond. So on to the, the site plan. Uh, so obviously the dwelling up here with the large extensions to the rear um, access through the existing access and just a bit closer up. Okay, so the proposed site plan is quite a modest agricultural building. So the yeah, set so the northern portion close close to the existing built form. Um, the plan is fairly sort of Typical in nature, modest in scale, as you'd expect to find in sort of this setting. And onto the floor plan, so you've got equipment store, feed store, workshop, and machine for machinery store, and just generally for storage and security purposes. And uh, going to answer the key considerations. So, there's no objection to receive, like I said earlier. Um, the reason for referral was solely due to one of the applicants' position being with the planning department. Uh, there's the overall design and center scale, so I think design is materially acceptable to the character of the surrounding area in accordance with the um, local planning policy. Uh, there's no impact on neighboring properties as a result of development, and the existing access which serves the, the dwelling and the, the small holding will be retained. Um, there's no high rate impact, so as such, it is recommended that the appropriate the those will be approved as per the conditions the report. That's the only voice of clarification. We have any points of debate on this. Can I propose yeah. that we accept the officer's recommendation, Mr. Chairman? And probably made proposals 
uh, in the seconder. Yeah. So uh, the does anyone has any particular points? In which case, uh, those in favour, please show. So you know, let's get talk oh, share all our values. <laughs> <Third one. laughs> um, that brings us, uh, uh, thank you very much. So that brings us to uh, item nine with the appeal decisions, which um, are provided for your information. Um, and as you will have heard so as well, uh, there are two uh, meetings scheduled for July, one on the 9th and one on the 23rd. That is because the one on the 23rd of June is postponed to make wonderful election administration in this room. Thank you very much for your time and perseverance today. Happy New Year.